Hello and welcome to my world. And obviously we're going to be talking about difficulty in video games or rather developer intent when it comes to difficulty in video games. Uh, this in, uh, is inspired by a recent debate that's happening thanks to Maximilian Dude uh, claiming that Final Fantasy 16 is just too easy for him and that the developers, in this case Square Enix, should have uh, you know trust players and uh, by making by giving them a harder experience akin to say Devil May Cry or Elden Ring and Bloodborne, we games developed by Capcom and From Software respectively. Uh, to which I say is like, how can someone like Maximilian Dude, who is a big Final Fantasy fanboy, not realize that developer intent? Um. Uh, is something that's actually an actual factor in how a game is created, marketed, and released. Uh, from software, the folks behind Elden Ring, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, etc., they are a company that goes out of their way to make a very challenging experience for players because that is what their target target audience is. From software is not interested in a mass market appeal. It's why they took a chance and, and with the marketing release of, of, of Elden Ring by saying this game is going to be so hard that very few people are going to finish it. Now, it led to that game selling 20 million copies because, okay, you're going to you challenge someone. You know what? Some folks are going to want to take up that challenge. And how many people actually finished Elden Ring? Let me tell you, it wasn't 20 million, all right? It, it, I, I don't even think as of the time I'm recording this, July 6, 2023, I don't even think 10 million people has finished Elden Ring across uh, PC, uh, PlayStation, and, and Xbox consoles. I don't I don't think that, that the, they've even crossed that milestone yet, folks. Uh, so, it, again, but that's the their intent. Now, we look at something like Final Fantasy 16 and Square Enix, where their mindset on just about every game they have published, going all the way back to the original version of Final Fantasy 7, excuse me, no, going back to Final Fantasy 4, uh, which I believe was Final Fantasy 2 here in the States, but the original, uh, what is Final Fantasy 4? Uh, it was always about the journey that you go on. It was like the adventure. Uh, the experience, uh, Square Enix has, uh, going back, again, going back to their days as, uh, as Square, uh, simply Square Soft, um, has been more about the, like, taking players on the journey and, and making them make sure that the, that the players are invested in the story, in the characters. It's why people to this day uh, still proclaim that Eris's death at the hands of Sephiroth in the original Final Fantasy VII is uh, one of the greatest twists in, a, in the history uh, uh, of, of video games. Um, it is why the... Uh, the uh, the first of the uh, Survivor trilogy with the of the Tomb Raider uh, of the more recent Tomb Raider games was so uh, held in so a high regard because you were going on the journey of Laura Croft of her her evolution into her being the sociopathic mass murdering treasure hunter <laughs> that she would become. But that, that, that is, again, it is the intent of the developers on what they are looking for. Now, which one of those do I, which one of those, when it comes to like, okay, take the player on a journey or make a game challenge uh, or make a game extremely challenging, uh, which one of those appeals to me? Uh, well, I'm more, I've always been more about the journey and the story of a game than I am about the challenge of a game. Always, I Always have been, always will be, because I grew up playing games like Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Star Trek 25th Anniversary, Star Trek Judgment Rights, uh, uh, Day of the Tentacle, Sammy Max Hit the Road, where it's more about the journey and the story and the adventure than it is about the actual challenge. Uh, so that's always been my mindset. It's why I'm drawn to the games that I'm drawn and why I always appreciate when games... And developers, when developers put difficulty in, in games, knowing that, okay, not everyone's going to be able to get through it on normal difficulty. Let's make sure that everybody can get through it 
from beginning to end. Uh, and you, uh, so and at the same time, you could have games that uh, was like really go out of the way to uh, give like folks to fully customize their experience. Saints Row 2022 uh, uh, has one of the most robust customization options when it comes to in-game difficulty that I have ever seen. You can make that game extremely punishing to get through uh, to, uh, by this turn that's this scaling up everything. Uh, it's like you, you, so you have there's a game where you can fully customize the experience. Uh, which I really think it w w was really eye-opening. It's like, okay, I could I customize my experience uh, w with uh, my Saints Row 22 uh, experience fully. It's like, it's like when I saw that, I was like, yeah, uh, let me customize them. Let me diff set the difficulty exactly how I want it to be for myself. Gave myself a little bit more of a challenge than I probably normally w would have as it compares to earlier Saints Row games. Um, but again, it really comes down to the developer intent of, of, of what they are trying to do. So I'm going to go forth and, 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 and say that more people are actually going to end up finishing Final Fantasy 16 than they're ever going to finish uh, playing Elden Ring it, in terms of actually getting to the end credits. It, 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 there is no question in my mind that's going to be the case. Even if it is, even if Final Fantasy 16 is kind of limited being locked to just one console but you know what it's going to end up being the case there and um, and i can actually take that a bit uh further as regards to like the difficulties and things of that nature one of my favorite games is mass effect uh and like the original mass effect was came out what the uh, close to 15 years ago now very few people have actually finished that game on hardcore difficulty and even fewer finished it on insanity difficulty. All right. So, so there's a game that, and that's a game that's been re-released as part of the legendary edition uh, collection that came out in 2021. And guess what? Still very few people have finished any of game in that uh, collection on insanity difficulty because it, it only really appeals to those who want that particular challenge. It's not the majority. And it never will be the majority. So again, that's just my thoughts, my opinions on uh, on all this. So what do y'all think? Uh, leave your thoughts on this subject in the comment section below. I actually look will look forward to reading them. Um, and so with that said, tighten your friendship bracelet, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.